Hello students, this is our first lesson in environmental science entitled An Introduction to Environmental Science. I hope you will watch the video and do some note takings. This lecture will help you understand first the meaning of the term environment, the importance of natural resources, that environmental science is interdisciplinary, the scientific method and how science operates, some pressures facing the global environment, and sustainability and sustainable development. All the things around us with which we interact includes the living things like animals, plants, forests, fungi, etc. The non-living things like for instance the continents, oceans, clouds, soil, and rocks. Our own built environment, this includes the buildings, human-created living centers, and the social relationships and institutions. We humans exist within the environment and are part of nature. Our survival depends on a healthy functioning planet. The fundamental insight of environmental science is that we are part of the natural world. Our interactions with each other matter a great deal. Humans depend completely on the environment for survival, enriched and longer lives, increased wealth, health, mobility, leisure and time. But natural systems have been degraded pollution, erosion, and species extinction. Environmental changes threaten long-term health and survival. This is environmental science. This is the study of how the natural world works, how the environment affects humans and vice versa. And with environmental problems come opportunities for solutions. Natural resources are vital to human survival. When we say natural resources, these are substances and energy sources needed for survival. We have two categories, the renewable and the non-renewable one. Renewable resources perpetually available like for instance sunlight, wind, wave energy. Renew themselves over short periods of time like timber, water, and soil. Take note, renewable resources are resources that can be destroyed. The non-renewable resources are the resources that can be depleted easily. For instance, we have the oil, the coal, and the minerals. The world population is increasing. More than 6.7 billion humans. And why so many humans? Thomas Malto said population growth must be controlled or it will outstrip food production. This also may lead to starvation, war, disease. Population growth has disastrous effects that is based on neo Malthusians. Human survival depends on how we interact with our environment. Our impacts are now global. Many great civilizations have fallen after depleting their resources. Look at the picture, the lesson of Easter Island. People annihilated their culture by destroying their environment. Now the question is, can we act more wisely to conserve our resources? Environmental science also talk about how the natural world works. Environment its impact to humans, and humans, its impact to the environment. Its goal is, is to develop solutions to environmental problems. Environmental science is an interdisciplinary field. It includes the natural sciences, and this gives an information about the natural world, specifically the environmental science programs. For the social sciences, they study human interactions and behavior, environmental studies programs. Now let's talk about the nature of science. 
Now, science is defined as a systematic process for learning about the world and testing our understanding of it. This is also defined as the accumulated body of knowledge that results from a dynamic process of observation, testing, and discovery. Science is essential specifically to sort fact from fiction, develop solutions to problems we face. Now, there are policy decisions and management practices. How about this one, the application of science? When we say application of science, we're talking to technology. Now, scientists examine how the world works by observing, measuring, and testing. This involves critical thinking and skepticism. Observational or descriptive science. This talks about when scientists gather information about something not well known or that cannot be manipulated in experiments. Astronomy, paleontology, taxonomy, molecular biology. Hypothesis-driven science. Research that proceeds in a structured manner using experiments to test hypotheses through the scientific method. Now, when we say scientific method, here are the steps. It started with the observations, followed by questions, hypothesis, predictions, testings, and results. Now, when we say a technique for testing ideas, a scientist makes an observation and asks questions of some phenomenon. The scientist formulates a hypothesis, and when we say a hypothesis, this is actually a tentative solution to a problem, a statement that attempts to answer the question. And this is used to generate predictions. And the results will either support or reject the hypothesis. Now, in testing the predictions, we need to conduct an experiment. When we say an experiment, it is an activity that tests the validity of the hypothesis. We need to consider variables. We have two variables involved. We have the independent variable and the dependent variable. When we say independent variable, a condition that is manipulated or a variable that can stand alone. The dependent variable is the variable that is being measured. We have the term controlled experiment. So when we say controlled experiment, one in which all variables are controlled or constant. So this is what we call the unmanipulated point of comparison. While treatment is the manipulated point of comparison. Now these experiments may lead to the data gathering or this data will lead to giving the information that is generally quantitative or quantitative. It means numerical in a form of numbers. Now, environmental ethics. When we say this environmental ethics, this is the application of ethical standards to relationships between human and non-human entities. It is hard to resolve. Depends on the person's ethical standards and depends on the person's domain of ethical concern. Now, for the following questions, I want you to answer this one in the Google Classroom. Please refer to the Google Classroom. Question number one, you need to explain and then answer the question and explain why. Question number one, should we conserve resources for future generations? Number two, should we drive other species to extinction? Number three, is it okay to destroy a forest to create jobs for people? And number four, is it okay for some communities to be exposed to excess pollution? Sustainability. There is a guiding principle of environmental science. And this is living within our planet. This means that the earth can sustain humans and other organisms for the future, leaving our descendants with a rich, full world.
developing solutions that work in the long term requires keeping fully functioning ecological systems. Take note that we are increasing our burden on the planet. Human population growth amplifies all environmental problems. Our consumption of resources has risen even faster. Life has become more pleasant for us so far. However, rising consumption increases the demands we make on in our environment. The rise in affluence has not been equal. The gap between rich and poor has doubled in the past 40 years. Now, the question is, what is our ecological footprints? The ecological footprint of the countries vary greatly. Example, the U.S. footprint is much greater than the world's average. Developing countries have much smaller footprints than developed countries. We are all challenged by this present situation. We need to come up with a decision that may help our environment. And the most important question that we are facing is, will we develop sustainably? Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something new today. I hope that we all become a responsible stewards of God's creation.